the next point. We should ensure that whatever we see is clear. That means work is being done and we can see that it is in opposite direction. Hello learners, you are welcome to another segment of civic education. I'm so delighted to meet you again. I still remain your civic education teacher, Ruth Tanko Godwin. How are you today? The last time we met, we were able to discuss about interpersonal relationship or individual relationship. And we were able to see how an individual can have personal relationship with the government, with others, with his organization, and so on and so forth. Now, before I go further, let me ask you this question. I know each and every one of you live in a community. Now, what can you say is the relationship between your community and other communities that are around you. Can you say you are living peacefully? Can you say you have a cordial relationship with that com your community, have a cordial relationship with that community? That brings us to our topic of today, which is intercommunal relationship. What did I say, students? Intercommunal relationship. What do we mean by intercommunal relationship? This is the relationship which deals with the mutual existence of participation of a member of a community. Intercommunal relationship is said to exist when members of a community live in peace with one another and other communities and share common views as regards development issues of the community. Did you get that? Let us add more explanation. When there is an intercommunal relationship existing between members of a community, they see themselves as fighting a common cause to achieve a common goal for the peace and well-being of themselves and their generation yet unborn. Did you get that? Did you get a picture of what intercommunal relationship is? Did you see it that it is a relationship? Let's bring it down to a layman language. We can say it is a relationship whereby a, another community have with another community. Like I started with the scenario of your community. Let's assume, let's call your community, community A. And let's call the community by one side of your community, community B, then the other one, community C. The relationship that exists between your community and those other communities surrounding you is what we call intercommunal uh, relationship. And we said this relationship has to be cordial and peaceful. That is what is needed. That is the ideal situation. Why do we say this relationship have to be cordial, peaceful, and friendliness? That brings us to the next uh, issue, which is the importance of intercommunal relationship. Why am I emphasizing that the relationship have to be cordial and peaceful. Let's look at it. When it is cordial and peaceful, what can we derive from it? Promotion of unity. Promotion of unity. When there is good intercommunal relationship, it helps community to live together in unity and peace and to interact freely with one another without any fear. Take, for example, your community A 
have no good relationship with community B and community C. Do you think you will be free to move to that community A to do business, to make friends, and do whatsoever you want to do? No. You will always live in fear. Even when you have something important to do, even when you want to, to, to uh, maybe invite them for a ceremony, you will be afraid because you do not know what will become of you if you invite them or if you honor their invitation. So, but when there is a cordial relationship, you find out that everybody will live in peace and it will drive away fear within the community and outside the community. have another importance of intercommunal uh, relationship as promotion of development. It promotes development. One of the things that inter interact development to a community is the way the people live and relate to one another. It attracts development because when community A are in peace with community B and community C, the people in community A can go and do their businesses. And because they do their businesses, they, they will be able to get income. When they gather income, they make savings. When they gather savings, they will be able to bring it back to their community and develop their community. And if there is any development in the community, it can be sustainable. But if there is no peace, there is no good relationship, even if there is any development, it can not be sustainable because wherever there is any conflict, it can be destroyed. It can be easily destroyed. And no one can make any meaningful uh, development when living in fear. So one of the importance of good intercommunal relationship is development. It promotes development. Another importance is that it enhances security. What did I say? It enhances security. Security of life and property is very important to mankind. When there is no intercommunal relationship, there will be no security and the lives of people will be in great danger. Yes. When community A is living in fear, do not have good relationship with community B and community C, everybody will be living in fear. Your life and properties will be in danger because the other community can easily come and destroy your own community. You can also easily go and destroy their own community because of the conflict that exists between the communities. So, but when there is good relationship, cordial relationship, you find out that the security, lives and property of the people will be ensured. Community A will look out for community B, community B will look uh, for community C. Each and every one of them will serve as the watchdog of the other. And with that, they will live in proper security and life will be a better place for all of them. My dear learners, don't you think that is a good thing to do? Don't you think that's an ideal thing to do? So, intercommunal relationship is very, very vital. Another importance is that it enhances business. It enhances business. No one will want to do business with people from a community who are always in conflict with each other. When a community usually flee so that no one can come in with a reasonable business, 
But when there is good intercommunal relationship among people with other communities, businessmen and women will not be afraid to do business in the community or locality. You can imagine. If your community is always in conflict, there is always violence, riot everywhere. People that we want to even invest in your community will be afraid because no one will come and invest his own wealth, his own income, and tomorrow when there is violence, it will be destroyed. It will scare away investors from your community and that will in turn bring down the community in terms of incomes, development, and other good things of life. So, when there is good relationship in a community, the business, they will find out that it will be a beehive of activities of business. People will want to come and do business with you, and you can easily go out and do business in other community, and everybody will be happy, and the, the community will be a happy place to, and a safe place to live. Now, even while I am talking about the importance of intercommunal relationship, I know you are now seeing it and knowing it, and also you are interested to live a good relationship with other community. But some of you will be asking, how can that be achieved? Especially when you live in a community where there is always violence. When you live in a community where there is no good interpersonal relationship or good communal relationship with other community. You will be asking, how can we achieve that? What kind of skill can we have to achieve that? And that brings us to the skills for resolving the intercommunal conflicts. Yes. If paraventure intercommunal conflict exists between your community and another community, you as a civic education learner, as a civic education student, what can you do or what, can, what kind of solution can you provide to your community to be able to live in peace with other community. And let us look at some of the skills that can be used to bring harmony, to harmonize communities that have conflict between, with other communities. That brings us to the skills for resolving intercommunal conflict. Number one is dialogue. I repeat. Dialogue. Dialogue is one of the skills, one of the solutions that can be used to solve problems or conflict between two communities. It is a situation where people who have dispute over certain issues usually sit down to find a way of ending the dispute, usually comes together through their representative. For example, when you have a problem or community A have a problem with community B, in trying to use this means of dialogue, they may select certain set of people who will serve as their representative. Maybe it may be their elders, it may be their spokesmen, it may be their youth, then the other community too, we select those that will represent them. They will now come and sit down in the round table and look at what really was the problem. How did they lead to that problem? What can be done to solve that problem? And with that, they will dialogue with one another, agree on a certain time that will bring lasting peace to that community. And when that is used, we can say they are using dialogue to solve the conflict between the communities. We also have another skill which can be used to solve problems or conflict in between two communities, which is called problem solving. 
problem solving. This is a situation in which the parties in a conflict, either by themselves or through the assistance of a third party, find solution to their problem in a cordial environment. How do they we do that? Maybe the communities will find somebody who will serve as a third party. It can be a lawyer, it can be a legal representative, it can be even government representative who will come as third party. They will now sit also on a round table. They will talk to one another to find a lasting solution. For example, if community A have a dispute with community B consigning maybe a land dispute, and they said, okay, maybe in that land, maybe their young ones normally go to play football on a, a daily basis, and the other community said, no, we are supposed to also enjoy the, that field to play the ball, and that brings uh, conflict. They can also say, okay, this is how we are going to do it. This community A, you can use the fuel maybe two days in a week. The community B will also use the fuel two days in a week. So you find out that they, we all come to conclusion in agreement and also be able to find a lasting solution to that conflict through the thought party and whatsoever that come up through that discussion, the third party will get back to the community and tell them what is the agreement and when it is followed, you find a lasting solution to that problem. We also have mediation. Mediation. Mediation is the effort to end a disagreement between two or more people or groups by talking to them and trying to find things that everyone can agree on. In this type of uh, solution making, you find out that each party has to shift ground. Each party has to sacrifice some of its claim so as to bring peace. For example, again, let's assume the community A and community B are fighting concerning a certain boundary or a certain land. Now, in this type of solution making, you find out that the community A will say, okay, we will give up part of our land the community B will say, we will give out part of our land so that peace will reign. You find out that in this type of situation, it is a win-win, never lose-win. It is either win-win or lose-lose. At least one of the party will agree to sacrifice some of its claim just to bring a lesser solution. Now, my dear learners, I know some of you will be asking, must we follow this to solve the problem? Can't we fight to get our rights? Totally. No, it is not done that way. If you insist, it means the conflict will continue. And if the conflict continue, there are certain consequences. There are certain disadvantages of conflict, certain disadvantage of lack of mutual uh, uh, understanding or relationship between 
to communities. And that brings us to the consequences of intercommunal community conflict. Consequences of intercommunity conflict. One of the consequences, or let's say the disadvantage, is violence. This is usually as a result of disagreement between people, either as people of the same tribe or religion or not. Violence. And you know, no one can live peacefully in a society or in an environment that is violent. So if this dialogue or if these skills are not uh, used to bring about mutual relationship between communities, there is always going to be violence in that society. And who oh, we want to live in an environment where there is violence. Before you know it, people will start running away from that community. And when people run away from that community before, because of violence, for the fear of their lives and their property, you find out that the community will not be a good place to live. Now, the other consequences of intercommunal conflict is the retardation of development. This is usually as a result of communal conflict because no person or government will like to develop a place when that community is in a conflict situation. When government, even when you cry for development or you cry for a certain project and the government knows that that community is always in violence, they will not want to come and invest their resources in that community because for the fear of maybe tomorrow it can be destroyed. Just like I explained earlier, no investor will want to come and invest. So with that, you'll find out that that community will be retarded in terms of development. The development process of that community will be dwarfed or stopped. So that is another disadvantage of intercommunal conflict. We also have interruption in socioeconomic activities. Yes, my learners, you can imagine, there will be no any economic activities that will go on in that community because of conflict. Socioeconomic activities will be stopped because nobody will want to move about or go anywhere when there is communal conflict. And my learners, you agree with me that when there is socio-economic activities in a community, that community becomes lively. There will be life pumped into that community, and even the people in that community will be happy living there. But when there is always violence, there is always riot, they, they do not have good relationship with other communities, you find out that their socio-economic activities of that community will be nothing to write home about. Now, my learners, we also have disease and poor environmental habits. There is usually spread of disease and several sickness in times of conflict. Hospitals are usually closed for fear of attack on hospital personnel or patients. When there is violence, when there is riot, when there is conflict, you find out that if when the, 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 there will be disease, that will be rampant because people will be killed, animals will be killed, they will be born of tires and so on and so forth. And you find out that that also brings about health risks to the people that are living in that community. My learners, with this and so many are the consequences of conflict in a community. But for the risks of our time, I will want to leave you there, here. But before I go, I will leave you with an assignment to be sure that you understood what we've been talking about or what we've been able to discuss. The assignment goes like this. Explain the meaning of intercommunal relationship. Explain the meaning of intercommunal relationship. Number two, state and discuss the importance of intercommunal relationship. State and discuss the importance of intercommunal relationship. Number three, Enumerate and explain the skills for resolving intercommunal conflict. Enumerate and explain the skills for resolving intercommunal conflict. While my learners, I hate to leave you, but what will I do? 
time is not our friend. Till we meet again, when you want to submit your questions, you can submit it through my number, 080 080-240-40570. 080-240-40570. For further studies, you can follow this reference, Elaborate Civic Education by J.P. Sale and Civic Education for Colleges by Isaac Olubumi. I still remain your Civic Education teacher, Ruth Tanko Godwin. Stay safe, and till we meet again, bye-bye.